In the last episode, we examined the process of getting a coffee bean from seed to ready to brew. In this next episode, we'll look at what it takes to turn that bean into a cup of espresso. I was always told that the grinder is the most important part to coffee, to espresso specifically. I had bought a, an expensive home machine and I didn't invest in the grinder and I paid for it big time. I brought that same machine here to our shop, but I noticed my espresso machine went from mediocre to incredible based on the grinder itself. You have to know, the most important thing for a good cup of coffee is the grinder, because without a proper ground coffee, it's not possible to extract a good cup of coffee. Here we are at Malkoning in Hamburg. So Malkoning was founded in 1924. At this location, around 100 employees. We are producing around 700,000 grinding burrs a year. The heart of a coffee grinder is the grinding burr. First of all, we start with a bar of high alloy steel. Then we cut that in pieces. So we put them into an oven. We heated it up to 600 degrees Celsius and cool it down slowly to make it smooth again and take out all tensions before we bring it to the machine. We cut in the teeth. It wasn't a scientist who developed that, so it uh, was some people from here. Then we bring the burrs to a laser to mark the burrs. After that, we grind them flat. We blast them to artificial aging them. Artificial aging means we shoot with cross balls to the sharp edge of the finished burr. With that, we make sure that there is no decrease of grinding performance from the beginning to the end. Clean them, pack them, and ship it to our customers or build it in, in our own products. So this one, we just assemble on the traditional way, just on a bench with tools in a row. We have around 100 suppliers, between 300 and 400 parts are required to make this espresso grinder. Every grinder is tested and tested with coffee. The gap between the burrs makes the particle size distribution. If you are requiring really a fine espresso, then you can see these holes here, these small holes, and the gap between the burrs are more or less 0 0.05 millimeters for a fine espresso. For a French press or filter brew, so a very coarse ground, you need 0.6 millimeters. And one burr is standing still and the other one is turning. So it means the beans entering here and are ground here out. And the ground coffee is exiting here outside of this diameter. The shape of the burrs makes then the particle size distribution which makes the quality of the ground coffee and at the end, the quality in the cup. We cannot make the coffee better, but we can get out the best of the coffee bean. You can go cheap on the machine, but the grinder has to be perfect. So don't save money with the grinder. We've talked about the grind and the importance of the grinder, but we haven't really dove into the, the espresso machine yet. We chose La Marzocco, the Linea, because it's a classic. It maintains nine bars of pressure, which is kind of optimal for espresso, and it's made in Italy. I mean, that's where espresso originates. 
purtroppo la scienza su Firenze, in Firenze e quando ci a, a 360 gradi ti guardi intorno e vedi cose belle e quindi tu cerchi di farle belle. La passione per le macchine c'è sempre stata, no? Eh? Chi hai fatto il caffè qua? Io no. Chi era? 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 Chi his whole life in the company, building espresso machines. He's the son of one of two founders, Giuseppe. The Bambi brothers, they were well known in Florence as panel beaters. So they were really good in bending metals by hand. And in 1927, one of the two brothers, Giuseppe saw a big potential on the espresso machine. So he decided to try to create a new project, and he asked his brother, Bruno, to join. La Marzocco was the name they chose for the very first espresso machine they created, and the company as well. La Marzocco was a strong symbol of the Asian Florentine Republic, and they were proud Florentine men. The machine you see on the counter are machines from what we call the vertical era. The machine were like that, were with a vertical boiler. And this is the first machine of my father, the design of my father. The purpose of that kind of machine was to brew coffee quickly on demand, so do it espresso. Espresso was just the adjective, but was not so easy to work with the machine. The groups, they were all around the machine. The barista had to hug the machine to brew coffee or to turn around the machine. So it was really uncomfortable. And then on the frontal side, you have the steam wand was not used to for milk. Nobody used to have milk in coffee shop. The steam one was a functional aspect to manage the pressure inside the boiler because they had no safety valve. So it was dangerous, it was tricky. That's why Giuseppe, in 1939, had really a brilliant idea, was to move the boiler from the vertical position to the horizontal position. The steam one was on one side, so it was not dangerous and was far from the brewing station. And really important, the machine was not so high anymore. So the barista could talk with the customer. So this great idea of Giuseppe made a revolution. So uh, at the end of the 40s, another coffee machine producer, Gaggia, had the idea to introduce the lever system, basically introducing manual pressure, squeezing coffee. <laughs> with the lever, we move from two bar of the vertical era till a maximum of 14 bar. So we have a huge increasing in pressure. This high pressure make also possible to have the crema in the espresso before people had no crema. The crema is what can lock the aroma inside the espresso. If you have a broken crema, it means that the aroma is already gone. When we changed the system of erogation of the coffee, we had a hydraulic pressure developed by a piston che era spinto sull'acqua con una pressione di 9 atmosfere, sviluppata da una grande moda a questa leva perché era uno sforzo molto forte per un barista anche abbastanza pericolosa, perché ogni tanto qualcuno la prende per la vista. And that's why the baristas they start complaining about their job. And we move slowly to the 60s with the first semi-automatic machine. And it was in this period that uh, Giuseppe started to be concentrated about the temperature. Mentre prima su un solo boiler la temperatura era controllata molto male perché era condizionata a un pressostato in quanto una caldaia sola che fa pressione non può essere controllata con una temperatura ma deve essere controllata con un pressostato per sicurezza, no? That's why Giuseppe decided to create two separated boilers, one dedicated for the brewing and the other one dedicated for the steam. These are all the evolutions of machine erogation. The first machine erogation made by Marzocco was GS. And the core of this technology is the technology we are still using. So the heart of our coffee machine 
are the two boilers, stainless steel boilers. There are more than 300 pieces in a coffee machine. The first main part is the production of the boiler. We have got these long bars, we cut. We begin to make holes in these tubes. There is another department that begins to weld. And then they send the machine to hydraulic department. Then the electrical department, so all the wiring, all the pressure sensors, all the temperature sensors, all the brain, because every coffee machine has got a microprocessor unit. Perhaps the most important is called bench test. And these guys have to check everything. And then they assemble all the external body of the coffee machine. Usually in the production line, every guy is doing a phase that can be 10 seconds, 20 seconds. This is, we would like to do the opposite. Today, one of our guys is doing a big phase. He can do one electrical wiring or he can do one mechanical assembly. Some of them are able to, to do everything that is needed to, to do a coffee machine. We still do everything by hand. It's an art. You know, in the... It's priceless to have Piero every single day here. He always pushed you to do better. And this is what I mean when I, when I tell you that we still feel the connection with the past and with the, with the mood of the company because we are still moving in the same direction 90 years later. Espresso is one of the many simple things that are the product of continual innovation and complex layers of global cooperation, competition, and exchange that no one person or organization could possibly plan or manage. That we can walk into our local shop and get a shot of espresso and not even think of it as extraordinary is a feat of human civilization and the wonder of global exchange. Our role on this end of the coffee, as the roaster and as the barista and as the shop owner, we're really the final link in the chain. We're kind of where it all comes together. It's about the beans, it's about the roasting, it's about the grinders and the espresso machine. Countries connected by these elements and economies affected by these elements. And the barista is dealing with all these things in just one shop. Morning. How's it going? Good. How can I help you? May I have an espresso, please? Yeah. 